Here's why Good Friday is so important. If you go all the way back to Genesis, back to the Garden of Eden, you find Adam and Eve living in an ideal situation. It was a world where there was only one rule. Do not eat of the tree that was in the midst of the garden, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For the day they ate of it, they would surely die. Now, built into creation was this concept that to not believe the Creator, to disobey God, if you would, resulted in death. Adam and Eve did eat of the tree. Adam and Eve chose to believe the serpent rather than choosing to believe God. God came, questioned them about it, and then cursed the ground, the serpent, the woman, and the man. Yet there's something interesting that we find in that curse. The woman would have trouble in childbearing. The man would find difficulty in work. Now, both of those things would be very difficult to carry out if they died that day. They were the only humans on earth at this point. God then went and replaced their fig leaf clothing that they had made for themselves. And it says that he made them garments of skin. Now, if you think about it, how is it that you make a leather coat? What is step one? Well, the answer is obvious. Step one of making a leather coat, you've got to kill the cow. You see, there was something else that was built into creation from the very beginning. It's something called substitutionary atonement. This idea that one thing could die in the place of another. And it had to be something that was innocent of the crime. Whatever sacrifice God made on that first day for Adam and Eve, that creature had done nothing wrong. It was Adam and Eve that had sinned against God. It was Adam and Eve who did not believe the Creator. Now fast forward until we get to Jesus on the cross. You see, while lots of animals could die, they'd only be temporary fixes, if you would. They can't fully stand in place of a human being. We were made differently than the rest of creation. So it had to be another human. It had to be another person, another man, who would come, be blameless, yet be sacrificed for the wrongdoing of mankind. Jesus did that on Good Friday. He fulfilled that part of the curse. He became the curse for us, bearing our sin on the cross, taking our shame. And he calls us to believe the sacrifice. He calls us to believe God when God says that all who call upon the name of Jesus Christ will be saved. All who look to the cross instead of looking to themselves so we are put in the same exact position that Adam and Eve were put into. Who will you believe? Will you believe yourself that maybe you can be good enough, that maybe you can work hard enough, that maybe you can earn God's favor by living a good enough life, by feeding the hungry enough, by caring for the poor, clothing the naked, visiting those who are sick and in prison? Can you do all of those things enough to earn God's favor? Or will you choose to believe him? When he tells you that he loves you enough that he provided the sacrifice necessary for you. When you believe God, rather than believing the world, rather than believing yourself, when you believe God, your sins are forgiven. They're put on Jesus Christ. They're put on him as he was hanging on the cross. They're taken care of. And you gain that which Adam and Eve did not have eternal life. I call for you on this Good Friday, believe God that he made the sacrifice for you.